This needs to be the last video you watch before you start acrylic pouring. Hello, my name is David. I am the Left Brained Artist, and I've been doing acrylic paint pouring for about four years. I am self-taught. Back when I started, I didn't see a lot of videos about how to acrylic paint pour in a way that I could understand. Now, I'm a software developer by trade. That's what I've done for the last 20 years or so. And I'm not a feel the art type of person. I have to have a step-by-step -step guide in order for me to really understand and learn. In addition to that, I wanna know the why. I just don't want you to tell me what to do. I wanna know why I need to do it that way so that it sticks in my brain. And that's how I teach on this channel. This video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to start acrylic paint pouring now. There are a lot of different things that I can't go into detail on, but I have other videos. Anytime I get to that point, I will mention it and put a banner here and a link to that video in the description below if you want to get a little bit more in depth about those topics. Otherwise, let's get you to the point where today you can do an acrylic pour. All right, first, what do you need to acrylic pour? First thing, obviously, is we need acrylic paint. Almost any acrylic paint will do. However, there are different types of acrylic paint. We have the craft paint, which is generally the cheapest paint, the dollar store paint. This is all gonna be, uh, it's, it's a little bit lower quality, so we're gonna mix it up a little bit differently, but it absolutely works. And to start out, 100% I recommend you use craft paint. The more you paint, the better you are gonna be and the less resources you waste at the beginning. Now, there's tons of different types of paint. We have Arteza, which you can buy online that's really highly pigmented. Liquitex Basics is a pretty common paint around the world. Uh, from Liqu Liquitex, this is their entry-level paint. Artist Loft, this is the paint from Michaels in the United States and there's three different levels, level one, level two, level three. And I always recommend that people you start out with the level one if they're gonna use this type of paint. Um, level three is way more expensive per ounce and there's not a lot of bang for the buck minus some of the beautiful colors that this comes in that don't really come in the, the cheaper versions. Simply Acrylic, this was from Walmart. Pabeo, another pretty popular brand. Uh, a Soho, I'd consider this a student level acrylic. So you have student level acrylics, which are gonna be kind of these tube paints are gonna be student level. You have professional acrylics, like the level threes, and then you have craft paint. To start out, I'm gonna use some of the craft paint and a couple of the tube paints just to show you the two different ways to mix those. They'll work great. Windsor & Newton, this is another, this is more like a professional type of paint that works really well. This is actually their student version, but it is so much more pigmented than a lot of these colors that I'd consider it more of the uh, premium type paint or the artist level paints. So the next, we, the next thing we need is something to mix paint in. And the reason why we need something to mix paint is because all of these paints are too thick. They're not going to be fluid enough to pour, hence acrylic paint pouring. So we need to dilute them with water and some other things that I'll show you to save a little money. So we need something to mix these in. So I, my preference is I like these cheap um, paper cups, not Dixie cups, those don't have enough strength, but these are a little bit thicker than uh, the Dixie cups. They have kind of a little plastic outer coating to keep them from getting wet and to kind of tearing, but these work great for paint pouring. And they will actually hold paint. I have these paints that I've been using uh, for the last couple of weeks. They'll hold paint for a long time without getting gross like wet paper does. Another thing you can use like red solo cups. I use these when I'm making a ton of paint, uh, just plastic cheap cups that I bought. So you can paint, pull the paint out, clean them out and reuse those. Another thing that I use are takeout containers. I just save these and then uh, it's a nice airtight, airtight lid that I use all the time. I use things like honey. Um, honey containers. So any of those things will, will work for your pouring containers depending on how much paint you want to make. So the next thing we need is your painting surface. What are you gonna paint on? You can paint on so many different things. Wood, canvases, tiles. I am, today I'm I have this um, eight by eight square canvas that I'm gonna paint on. 
This is a four x four tile that I bought a whole box of from Lowe's, just really cheap. I think these were like 18 cents or 25 cents a piece in when I bought them in bulk. And then you can also pour over pours that you don't like. This is one that I did. It has all these things on the edge that I really didn't like. So I'm just gonna pour right over the top of it. I've just cleaned it off with some soap and water and it's good to go. The next thing that is super vitally important that a lot of people have problems with is a level. You need to have a level surface because what happens if my pouring surface isn't quite level and I pour liquids on this, it looks beautiful, but what happens over time as the, as the liquid gets to move? You know, what does liquid do? It goes to the lowest point. So in this case, it's a little high here. It could look beautiful when I leave it. Tomorrow morning, all of this paint's gonna rush off to this side because it's not level. So we need to make sure we have a level surface. I just have this little cheap level that I have to make sure that the uh, canvas is level. It doesn't have to be 100%. You know how it usually has a little two lines. If it's within those two lines, I would call it good. Normally, I use these big thumbtacks. I'll put a link in the description below. Even small thumbtacks work great. This is a set of thumbtacks that I've used for years. I like the big ones just because they come up and they're a lot easier to push in and, and come out. You can also, with something like this, you can just take a cup, turn it over, put it right on top. I don't recommend doing this with a canvas because as you can see, it kind of, it kind of pushes the canvas up where the cup is, unless the, the cup, unless you have four cups and you put them around the corners, that way it's touching the wood here instead of the canvas. Um, so I don't recommend it for canvases generally. Another thing is if you have a table like mine, I started paint pouring on my kitchen table and it was absolutely not level. I, it has uh, leaves in the middle and so it kind of bowed into the middle. It's kind of a long table, it bows into the middle even with the leaves in. So no, no matter what I did, it wasn't level and tacks didn't really work. You can kind of pull the thumbtacks out to kind of help make it level, it just didn't work. So if you have that problem, I recommend you use these little hanging hooks. You just tighten them until they touch the wood everywhere, put it down, you can already see that this is not level, it kind of moves around, so I know I'm going to have to make an adjustment. But if I sit this here, it is not level. That direction or that direction, see how it moves? So all I have to do with something like this is find where it's not level. In this case, I want to raise this part up, and all I do is just raise this up two turns, put it back down. Do I have a shake? No shake anymore. And now I'm not exactly level, but between my two lines. Not exactly level, but between my two lines, if I wanted to, I could pull this one out a half, pull this one out another half. See how you can make it really easy to center your canvases? So again, we need canvases. We need a way to level our canvases. And last but not least, we need a place to paint. I made this table that I use in my studio, and this is actually a Lolly Vifi um, silicone mat. They're a little bit expensive. I would totally buy one again. It's so easy to just come paint, let it dry, and I can just peel the paint right off, throw it away. Sometimes I go out on my uh, grass, put this on a table, just use a little brush and clean it all off, and then I paint for a couple weeks and it gets all messy like this and it's not a problem at all. But I know most of you aren't going to have something like this. To start out with, you know it'll work great, a garbage bag. All you want to make sure is that you have enough room on both sides of your canvas because we're going to be tipping off paint. We want to make sure we have enough room that on all the sides, it's not going to, um, we're not going to get, be getting paint everywhere. I also recommend you have a thing of paper towels handy. So when you get it on your hands or you get it on a place that you want, you can immediately clean it up. Another thing that I like to have is I have this squirt bottle that I use, um, I, or this uh, container I use that just has water. I used to have a squirt bottle, so anytime I got anything on my floor or my table, I would just squirt it off, use the paper towels, and clean it up immediately while it was wet. Acrylic, the nice thing about acrylic paint is when it dries, for most things, especially hard surfaces, you can just peel it off. For things like carpet and clothes, 
As you can see, my shirt, carpet and clothes, it doesn't really come out of, so you gotta be careful in that regard. So the next question that I get is, when I'm mixing up my paint, how much do I need? Now, I have a calculator on my website and a great video that talks about that here. In simple terms, you need about one ounce of paint per 25 square inches of surface area that you're painting. This is a 10 by 10 canvas. So 10 times 10 is 100. Then I have the sides, which are half an inch sides. So I have, you know, five here, five here, five here, five here. So another 20, 120 total surface area. Divide that by 25. That means I need about five ounces of paint to cover this. I can do the same calculation for eight by 10, for four by four. If you have a canvas that has the thicker um, sides, you'll want to take that into account. If this was one inch sides, then I'd, you know, I'd have 10 on each side, 40 instead of five, 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 five. So take that into account when you are starting your pour. As I showed you before, you can actually, if you make too much paint, I just use saran wrap to put over my cups and this will last, um, as long as you make it seal, this will last for weeks really. You can put them in containers that actually have lids. It'll last for honestly months, uh, as long as you use a decent uh, water that isn't gonna go bad, which again, I have another video that talks about that. So for mine here, we're gonna do it as easy as possible. We're gonna do two different types. We're gonna do these three uh, craft paints and all the craft paints you're gonna mix about the same. And then we're gonna do these two student level acrylics and most student level acrylics you're going to mix up the exact same. I, in my videos, I always tell people to use a kitchen scale and you can actually weigh out your paint to do these measurements. I'm going to do both just to show you to start out whatever you have, use it. In, in this case, I'm going to do these without a scale and I'm going to do these with a scale and I'll show you why in just a minute. So for craft paint, any paint that you buy at the dollar store, um, any paint that you buy for super discount on Amazon or things like that, generally I'm going to consider those craft paint. And what we want to do is mix the craft paint one part paint, one part pouring medium, and then we'll just add water until we get the right consistency. Now, what is a pouring medium? I haven't talked about that yet. So there are lots of pouring mediums. What a pouring medium is gonna do is gonna take your acrylic paint and dilute it down to be more liquidy, to be more fluid. And the professional pouring medium, something like a Liquitex, so this is a medium and a varnish at once, are much more expensive than some of the other pouring mediums that I recommend. Uh, the reason why we use pouring mediums is because if I just use water with this, you know, let's say this cost a dollar for two ounces of paint. If I just used water with it, you know, I'm gonna use a half an ounce of paint, give or take, so two and a half ounces, uh, this is gonna cost about a dollar uh, to make. If I use a cheap pouring medium, which in the United States, at Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that, you can lose this flood flow trawl. It is a, with house paints, you actually put it in the house paint to make it look more smooth. It works great as a pouring medium. You can use white glue. I got this Craft Smart white glue from um, Michaels. Any PVA white glue will work. So if you're not in the United States, get PVA white glue. It's generally very cheap. It'll all work great. That's actually what we're gonna to use today. You know, Elmer's Glue All, again, if you buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's, it's like, these both are about 15 to $17 a gallon. This was, if I recall correctly, this was $17 itself. So the reason I recommend using glue or flood, again, is because it's so much cheaper per ounce to make and it goes a long way. Not only that, but these also, have some binding qualities in it. So when your paint dries, you get less cracks. Um, this is gonna be the best. If you get lots of cracks, generally a professional pouring medium, adding a little bit of a professional pouring medium will help that. But um, again, to start out with, I would just recommend using glue or flood flow troll. So mixing these up, we're gonna do, like I've said, the easy way first. We're not gonna use the scale here. I'm gonna take my chocolate brown. Definitely shake these. You can already, you can already hear they're very liquidy. 
Um, so we're going to need less water to make the liquid that we want. But all I'm going to do is take one of my cups. I'm going to take a five ounce cup here. I'm going to take, I'm going to actually take this whole bottle and pull it all in here. So this is two ounces of paint. You know, it says right here, two ounces of paint. And because I don't want to have to use a scale, all I'm going to do is put two ounces of glue in this. So a lot of times you'll hear people talk about one part paint to one part pouring medium. This is what they're talking about. So I'm putting the exact same amount of pouring medium glue as I have of paint. That is one to one. So I'm just using the same container. Now I've got two ounces of glue. The nice thing about doing this is it gets all the leftover paint that you had in there. And then once you add the pouring medium to the paint, you really want to mix that up well. Now for my mixing, I use wood craft sticks. I got these at Walmart, I believe. I have these ones for when I make bigger batches and I recycle as much as I can. If it isn't bro broken or uh, has a problem with it, I just let it dry and then reuse it. Then I use these popsicle sticks. I think this whole thing was like 10 bucks. So, and this has been more than a year that I've been doing it and I'm not even a third of the way through. And I'm just gonna reuse some of these sticks. Usually I try and get a color that's similar, but. And I wanna mix that up really well. I'm gonna show you here. So you can see this is pretty thick still. Some glues are gonna be thicker than others, but it's gonna be pretty thick initially. But we just wanna make sure that color is mixed in really well. And you'll hear a lot of people talk about the consistency. The consistency means how liquidy your paint is. So the thicker your paint is, the slower it's gonna move on your canvas and the less it's gonna mix. The thinner your paint is, the quicker it's gonna move and the more it's gonna mix with the other paints. So in this case, for this paint, I'm actually getting the consistency that I want. See how it's making a little tiny mound and then immediately going away? It's not mounding up like a, a poop emoji. That would be, a poop emoji would be mound upon a mound. This is just a mound. And then thinner than this is it makes no mound at all. It just immediately integrates. So this is actually the consistency that I want, which is nice. That was easy. I had to add no water to this. Now I'm gonna do the same to both of these other metallic paints and come right back. So just really quickly, I only had half of a container of my green. So I'm just gonna, again, I want it to be one to one. So I'm just gonna do half of a container of glue. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close. The ratios really are to give you a good, uh, an idea of where where the paint to pouring medium needs to be. It does not need to be exact. Although the more exact you are, the easier it is to replicate results that you got before. And I'm using a smaller cup for this one because again, I only have, you know, this is gonna be at one total ounce instead of four total ounces. So two and two, two and two, this is only one and one. So the interesting thing is, here's my brown, remember? This was the consistency that I wanted and we'll show you about that in just a minute. So I'm pouring it out. I'm, my popsicle stick is about two inches off the ground and it's tilted at about a 60 degree angle. And again, this is a small popsicle stick. It is making a mound and going away. That's the consistency that I want. One thing to show you though, is if I get one of these big pouring sticks out, look at how different the consistency looks. I get this big pouring stick and I do the same thing. Look how there's hardly any, because there's more paint coming off, it's almost integrating immediately. That's why when you're comparing consistencies or the thinness of the paint, you wanna make sure you're using the same uh, 
mixing tool for all of them, or you're doing another method, which I'll show you in just a minute, to test consistencies. So again, I'm using the popsicle stick for the gray, and we're gonna come over here, look at the gray of the silver. It's making a mound and going away, similar to the brown already, so I'm probably good with this one. Now look at the green. Look, it's making a mound upon a mound more like a poop emoji. See how it's mounding up multiple times? So this needs water. And all I'm gonna do is take my little water container and slowly, very slowly, look. That's maybe half a teaspoon, maybe even less of water. And I'm gonna mix it in nice and slow. The closer you are to the consistency you want, the less water you wanna add and test. So I added maybe half a teaspoon of water. Make sure I get all my edges. Make sure I take my popsicle stick out and uh, scrape the edges. Again, because you'll have the thicker paint on the popsicle stick and a thinner paint inside. You don't want that. Do that a couple times. Now let's go check the consistency again. So now see how it's leaving a mound kind of like the others? There's still a little bit of mound upon a mound, so I still want a tiny bit more paint, or water, excuse me. I'm just gonna do a couple of drops, that's it. That was maybe an eighth of a uh, tablespoon, very little. Mix this up good. Again, we're gonna get the paint off the side there. So that's looking more like the other ones. And we're gonna refine that in just a second. That is how you do craft paint. It's one part paint to one part pouring medium and then water to get them all about the same consistency. So next, we're actually gonna use my scale. Next is a, a these are soft body paints and uh, actually some of these may be medium uh, medium body paints, but these paints are much thicker than the craft paint. So I'm going to show you here. I'm going to I'm going to zero out my scale with my cup on it. So now the cup weight isn't being included. So now I have a zero scale. I'm going to take my Soho white, let's shake it up just to make sure, and I want an ounce of paint, which is about 30 grams. I'm doing this, I like to measure in grams, and I know a lot of you guys aren't used to doing metric, because 30 grams is one ounce of paint. What if I wanted to make half ounce of paint? Half ounce of paint, I think, is harder to measure than 15 grams. That's just me. You could do this in ounces, and then my scale, obviously, I got my units here, kilograms. So there's my ounces. I can do the same thing. So. I want one ounce of paint. But already, look at how thick that paint is compared to the craft paint. The craft paint was liquidy as it came out. This is not liquidy. So I'm gonna have more, generally I'm gonna have better pigments. The pigments are the actual color uh, in the paint than I do there. So I need more either water or pouring medium to make this liquid. Now, because I have better pigments in these student body acrylics and I'm conscious about my money, I want to dilute them a little bit more because I can't. The color's still gonna shine nice through. So for paints, for student body acrylics, generally you're doing one part of paint to two parts of pouring medium. So I have one ounce of paint. That means I want two ounces of pouring medium. Now this is my white, so I'm making a little bit more than normal. And again, if this is slightly off, it's fine. I'm just realizing this, that my glue, I'm not using my fully, fully, uh, regular glue, I'm using my glue that I've already mixed, 70% glue to 30% water. It's okay. If you do this with 100% glue 
and then add a little bit more water. You're gonna have a little bit more pouring medium than paint, not gonna hurt anything at all. Uh, I just wanted you to know because it, you can see how much more liquid it is. Most glues are very thick. So even with the 100% glue, that's what I would have done. So now I've got two ounces. Let me get, I have a cup pouring stick. And again, I'm just going to mix it. Now the, the difference between mixing these paints and these paints is because you have such thick paint in here, you need to mix way more. Make sure you scrape the bottom. You can kind of see there the different colors of white. There's the white paint and then the white glue, which is just a different, slightly different color. But you're going to have to mix this much more than you're going to mix the craft paint. And another thing is you don't want to put the water in immediately because uh, it's going to be harder to get everything to integrate together. That's why I want to mix the pouring medium first, get it all mixed up, and then adjust the consistency with water. So really quick, let's check over here the consistency. Look how much thicker that is. And I did two parts of pouring medium to one part of paint. This paint is just so much thicker, so your mix is going to be thicker. So I'm going to have to add way more water. I'm just going to show you, you know, I was at 3.1 ounces. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of water. Um, if you're not confident, about, you know, I've done this a ton of times, so I know about how much water it is. If you're not confident, add a few drops, mix, test. Add a few drops, mix, test. Yes, it will take longer, but you will waste less paint. And as you paint, you're gonna learn all of those little things about the consistencies of paint. So I, already I can tell it's still too thick, but again, I put a couple tablespoons of water and look, it's still very mound upon a mound. So we're going to do it again. Put another tablespoon or so of water. And I did the cardinal sin. I did not uh, scrape my popsicle stick. Because again, your popsicle stick is going to have the thicker paint on it. If you don't scrape it and then you go to check the consistency, what's going to be coming off is going to be some of the new consistency and some of the old consistency and you're going to get it you're going to measure and check wrong so i know that needs a little bit more just looking at it now i'm, I'm down to half a tablespoon again the closer i get the less i put in scrape that off Let's get closer. Look, we still have a little bit of mound. See how it's kind of mounding up and kind of wiggling? So it needs probably another teaspoon of water. And again, this is just part one of measuring consistency. I'm gonna use a little piece of paper for part two, and I'll show you how easy it is to really nail down your consistency right. With acrylic pouring, one of the most important things is that you get the right consistency and that all the paints are the same consistency. They can be off a little bit. Some techniques actually want them to be off differently, but for, for you guys starting out, you want all these paints to be the exact same consistency. So I'm pretty sure that's about where I need to be. So I'm gonna do the magenta and we'll be right back. All right, so now I've got all of my paints made. They're all about the same consistency. It's making a mound and, and immediately going away, but not making a mound upon a mound. So now we're really going to dial in consistency. And to do that, I'm going to use a piece of paper, but it's got to be thicker paper than normal. So I have this little book that I've done a little notes in. I'm just going to rip out a page. This is thicker than normal paper. Made myself a little mess. You can use um, multi multimedia paper. You can use... What's that craft paper called? I don't remember, but you know what I'm talking about that we used to use as kids to cut up stuff. It just has to be a little bit thicker than normal paper. And I'll show you why in a second. All we're gonna do is make a little tiny, a dime size with each color. And we wanna make sure that the, the, the amount of paint we use for each color is about the same. 
and I'll show you why in a second. And I really didn't want that green to be in there, but it'll be all right. See how my brown is a little bit more? I'm actually just going to do a new one. It's better, better sized. And if you want a, a printout to do this, uh, one of my fellow artists actually made a great printout that has little circles so you can keep track better, which I will link in the description below also. Okay, the red needs to be a tiny bit bigger. Okay, so those are all about the same size. Obviously, this one's gonna be different. And all I'm gonna do is pick this piece of paper up and let it go for one, two, three, four, five. I like five just because I get some time. Look, gray is the most thin. The brown looks like it's the, the thickest, but uh, the white's pretty close. So I know I don't want to add any water to the gray. I want to add a little bit of water to the red, quite a bit more water to the brown. And look, look how different these were. Same color, but I had more liquid here, so obviously it's going to run faster. That's why you need all of these to be about the same size. And then a little bit more water in each of these, so I'm just going to... About that much for this. A little more than that for that. And because I have more paint, I obviously need more water. So we're just going to mix these all up. And then I can eyeball the consistency like we were doing before with the mound upon a mound. And then I can just do this again. Generally, I use a whole sheet of, of paper and then I can do a second uh, consistency check on the other side. So I'm not waste on the, you know, the opposite side. So I'm not wasting paper. In this case, I'm using kind of smaller paper, so I won't be able to do that. But you saw me, I just put a little bit of water in each based on how thin they were. I probably should use a bigger cup here. See, I'm getting right to the top. I only made about an ounce and a half of this, of this color. So now, I could do the same, you know what? I am gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna do it right in between. Maybe a little bit smaller. My brown. And obviously you want them to be in a line on the paper. If one's lower than the other, it's going to look like it went down faster. And then my white. There we go. So I got five dots about the same. One. So now these two are about the same. That's close enough. These two need a little bit more water. Need a little more red. A tiny bit more in the brown. And I'm gonna consider that good. I don't think we need to check again. So you don't have to do five colors, you can do three colors. I would recommend at least three colors um, until you get a hang of it and then you can do some monochrome. I've done some black and white paintings that I really love. Um, but to start out with, use three colors. And like I said, I made way more paint than I need so I'm gonna do a couple of canvases and a couple of different beginner techniques just to show So now I have my right consistency. Now let's do some pouring. So first of all, I'm gonna do my normal canvas. Again, I got my normal canvas here. It's on my jumbo thumbtacks, just to make sure. It's in, be it's in between the two middle ones actually. Not, not exactly, but close enough. So I have my canvas level. 
For the first and easiest technique that I recommend all of you guys try your first pours with, here's the one. It is called the straight pour. We're gonna take a cup. I know I need about five ounces. This cup's about five ounces, so I'm just gonna fill it all the way up. And we're just gonna layer all of my paints into here. Uh, I'm actually gonna start with a tiny bit of red, or magenta, not red. Definitely two different colors. We're gonna do some brown. Some white. And I'm just gonna layer these colors in here. When you guys are first beginning, just choose colors and paint. After you've painted a little bit, you'll start to realize that depending on how you put your colors in, affect what colors you get back out. So, you know, you, if you're adding colors that are too similar right on top of each other or too opposite, you might start to get muddy colors. Um, that's just all part of pouring in general. But again, I want you guys to actually start pouring and actually start getting some experience before we go into that type of that type of lesson. Actually, I think this is a six ounce cup now that I'm thinking about it. So I probably don't need much more than that. Okay, so I have all my colors in here. Um, just a quick note, you can tell how heavy a color is. If they're all the same consistency, I can tell how heavy a color is based on the size of the paint when I do this. So if you can see the red has a very thin layer there, that means the red dropped down into those paints. That means it's heavier than the rest of the paints. This zinc color, which is actually a metallic, is lighter because that um, layer there is so much thicker. So I know it's lighter than the other colors uh, the brown is probably a little bit lighter also, but it's kind of right in the middle. And I, I didn't notice the green before, but I'm guessing it's right in the middle. So just kind of a nice trick to tell how heavy a paint is. Again, when you're starting out, it doesn't matter. Get some paint on the canvas, get that learning done. So let's do a straight pour. Straight pour is exactly what it means. All I'm going to do is pour it straight on the canvas. And we're going to go slow. Uh, pro tip here is the faster you pour, the more the paint is going to mix. So if you see here, I'm painting really slowly and see how you can kind of see the definition of color. If I go really fast, all those colors mix a whole lot more. So if you want definition, go slow. If you want the colors to mix a lot, go fast. And with the straight pour, I'm just going to turn a little bit. And you can see here why I wanted to layer my colors. Because then the colors come out at different rates as I'm pouring. All right, so I've done the straight pour. I'm gonna have about enough paint to, to tilt off the edges, it's great. So just some quick learning. I love to learn while I'm painting. What I'm learning here is this brown is very light paint. I poured all the paint on, the brown is coming up to the top. That means the brown is lighter than the rest of those paints. So I probably wanna use less brown on the next one so it doesn't all look so brown. The next question I get a lot is, when do you use a torch? So with acrylic paint, I mixed all this up right now. So I have lots of little air bubbles. You can kind of see the little air bubbles around here. What a torch does, and I use just a, a torch that people would use in the kitchen, like a kitchen torch. What a torch does is it heats up the top layer of paint and it pops all those bubbles. The other thing it does is it heats the top layer of a paint up. And when you heat up paint, 
it allows the paints to move more. So some of those paints that are underneath are gonna be able to come up and some of the paints that are on top are gonna to be able to fall through. That's why you hear people talking about cells. Sometimes heat can help create cells because it breaks the, the strength of the paint, the paint bonding together. It kind of breaks that down a little bit and allows the paint to come up through the paint and other paints to drop down. So with the torch, you wanna to be very, very, you don't want to be close and you want to be very quick. See how it's popping those bubbles? That's it. If you're torching so much that you get raised areas or you burn it, you're way too close. If you don't want to use a torch in your house, no problem. The next thing I'd recommend is a heat gun. Again, this is just going to create a little bit of heat and put it out there. It does, and I just spilled a piece of paint. Even the pros can do it, my friends. But what I do is anytime I have that happen, I actually had this happen with the white right here. She's a little pair of tweezers. I'll pull that out. Nobody wants that in their paint. And I'm not calling myself a pro, but I have been doing this for a while, so. But again, a heat gun is a better alternative if you don't want open flame. Again, you want to go quickly. You don't want to use a hair dryer, even though you see people using hair dryers for acrylic pours. It just pushes too much air. It's just going to push that paint around. So we don't want to use an air dryer to pop the bubbles. So here, we're just going to kind of center all my colors here. And when you're doing a pour, initially we just want to get the paint off. We don't want there to be, see how the paint is moving so much? That's how I know I have too much paint on this canvas. So I'm going to first go off on this side. And you don't need to go fast here. Nice and slow. Let it go over to the corner. If you want to, you can stop right here. Take your finger out to the corner and get your, your very corners there. Because that's the hardest part to get the paint on. And then just let it slowly pour over. I'm just coming back. Slowly come back, choose the next side. Slowly let it off, come back. See how my red is starting to show up now? Because I'm letting it... You see how the paint is kind of holding right here? That happens when you're doing these, this square canvases, and I don't want it to happen. So I'm gonna move what we call the weight of the paint, where the majority of the paint is moving. See how it's moving right here? We call this the weight of the paint. I'm gonna move it back to the middle. Let it kind of go over that edge first. Then I'm gonna bring it back. And I'm gonna go back over to this corner. This makes it so much easier to cover. Do the same thing, come back to the middle. Look how I'm getting all those other colors coming up through that brown. Exactly what we wanted. See, I have the same problem on both sides. I want to bring my paint kind of back into the middle. Get it to roll off there. Come back. See how now it's rolling off a little bit more uniform on that side. And again, there is no reason to go super fast here. Take your time. I really love this color, but I gotta get the paint off, so I just gotta allow it to go. So my, see how much my paint is moving? It's hardly moving at all. This, I probably have a little bit too much paint on here, but that's how you tell if you have the right amount of paint because the paint isn't moving very much. But in this case, I think I'll be good. So I have this beautiful apron that I wear. It's kind of a thicker apron so the paint doesn't come through. But I do that because then, I just take my hands that are nasty, Wipe them on my apron, and I add to the beauty of this its own masterpiece. Now you can absolutely wear gloves. I hate them. 
they just rip. I have very large hands. I'm six foot eight. So I have, I mean, my that's 10 inch, 10 inch, and my hand is as big as it. So I haven't found gloves that I really like, so I don't wear them. I just clean this off with a paper towel, let it dry a little. So now that you're done, you just want to look around, make sure you got all the corners. I didn't get this corner right here, so I'm just going to take a little paint with my finger and just kind of dab it there. Looks like that corner got missed also. And then I'm done. I've done my first pour. And to be honest, I was worried that the brown would take over. I love the subtle color that's in there. I'm actually loving this more and more. Another telltale sign that the brown was thick, thinner than the rest is that it's coming up through the paint like that. These are called pearl cells. I wasn't trying to do that, but I'm using a metallic paint. Metallic paints are generally cell creators, and that's really what caused a lot of this, although the very thin brown paint did contribute also. I'm excited to see how that dries. So drying, I could leave it on this table and just let it dry, which is generally what I would do, what I would have you guys do. I want to do another pour. I want to use some more of this paint and show you a different technique that's easy for beginners. So I'm going to actually put it this table has four shelves underneath. If you move your painting, you have to make sure you're moving it to a place that is also level. I've had so many people tell me, it looked beautiful on here. Then I put it over on this other table to dry. That table didn't happen to be level. Again, they didn't check the level. So you can check the level of your canvas when it's here. Move it over before you do any painting. Move it over to where you're going to let it dry. Check the level. Make sure they're both level. If they're not, you don't want to move it and let it dry. I know that this table's level, so I'm just going to put it on my shelf underneath, and then we're going to do another pour. Another trick that uh, one of my subscribers did is they actually just, this all this paint here, this is a nice new surface, they actually just take a scraper, and they scrape this paint up, put it in a cup, and they use it to, to get the corners of the paintings or as a base coat, which we're not going to do here, but a base coat for their painting you can absolutely save this. I'm not going to do, I'm going to let it dry and then just throw this whole piece away. So again, I didn't like this because of these white things on the edge. I'm just going to paint right over it. There's no harm in that. You just want to make sure that the surface is clean. I've already cleaned this off just to make sure. I'm going to take a little of my water, put it on the paper towel. Give it a nice clean. Take the dry side. There we go. Now we're ready to paint again. So this time I'm going to do a tree ring pour, which is essentially the straight pour, but I'm going to do it in circles because then it creates what looks like a, the rings of a tree when you cut a tree. So what did we learn last time? This is slightly smaller than the 10 by 10 is an eight by 10. So I only need about four ounces of paint. This is a six ounce cup. I think I want the green to come out first. Because I'm pouring it out, the paint that I put in the bottom is gonna come out last. So I'm gonna do a little green. Do a little brown. I'm gonna use way less brown this time. Silver. I'm just gonna layer it again. It's amazing, I'm using the exact same colors in a different order and also in a different technique and I'm going to get a completely different looking picture. Next. Green. So it's a little dangerous to do red and green. They are complementary colors and they could potentially make even more brown, but I already have brown in here, so I'm not too worried about it. That's about four ounces. So again, this is the tree wing pour. I'm going to do just like the straight pour, 
but go in very small circles, like maybe the size of a dime. See how it's making rings? You can do big circles. I could do big circles like this if I wanted to. Or little circles. I prefer little circles. I think it looks better. And the slower you go, the more distinct your colors are going to be. The faster you go, the more they're going to mix. The faster you pour, not spin. And as the paint gets to the end, I like to use my finger to stop it at the end. Just so it doesn't drip back onto the canvas and make a, you know, I've picked it up and then had it drip here and drip here. It just looks funky. So the rest of these paint, last time I kind of used my finger to get the corners. This time I'm just gonna use the last little bit of paint here. those corners. And again, just a quick torch. See all those bubbles that came up? Then we're going to do the same thing. Nice and easy. There you go off the edge. See how as I'm pulling it back, all of these layers are kind of getting exposed. They're kind of growing. So that's what happens. You're really gonna pour off the outside. You don't have to be as worried about the outside. And then the inside is just gonna kind of open up. I think I wanna go this way. I don't like all that brown over there, so I'm going to let it drip off more than I normally would. See how much slower it's going than even the last pour? So it's going to be close. It looks like the paint's going to come off pretty even. And then at the end, I just want to decide do I want that centered? Do I want that kind of off to the side? I think I want it centered. So I'm gonna push it a little bit too far and kind of come back to let those open. Again, add to the nice paint on my apron. When I'm finished, I like to just look. I actually really like the depth of that. It kind of looks like it's going in kind of like a tunnel. And all of this cellular action is happening between the interaction between the, again, the metallic paint and a little bit the brown. This is the brown being thinner. It's kind of coming up in between. Well, I am very happy with that pour also. I know some of you guys saw these colors I chose and went, what are you doing? Sometimes you just got to experiment. In this case, I knew I wanted to, for this video, I knew I wanted to do some craft paint. I wanted to do a little bit of metallic just to kind of see what it does. And then I wanted to do some um, student level acrylic. I actually went to a website and, and put its coolers, C-O-O-L-O-R-S dot C-O. And I put three of these colors in. It gives you five colors. You know, I, I looked up colors that were similar to these and, and locked them in. And then tried to get two colors that were complementary to these. And it actually gave me white and a magenta looking. So... At least the computer thought they looked good together. So I have enough paint to do one more. We're gonna try, again, I'm gonna put this down below. We're gonna try one last one. Let's do it on this. I'm gonna do it on this tile. And again, I can use just a cup for the tile. Center that there. This last one is kind of a fun one. It's called a flip cup. 
I'm going to fill this cup again, just like we did before, but this time I'm gonna take my tile, turn it over on the cup, and flip the cup with it. So the reason why that's important is because the colors that I layer on the bottom are gonna actually be on the top. The colors I layer on the top are gonna to be on the bottom. So I need to be careful that I'm layering the colors like I want them. And I know the red was denser, heavier than the rest, so I want it to be on the bottom. So when I flip it, it's starting to move through and create some cool color combinations as it moves through. So we're gonna pop in some red. Magenta, excuse me, I keep on saying that. And then I think I'm gonna do white, because white is usually a thicker color, or a denser color. A titch of brown, I don't want it very much. Do the rest of this green actually. Bunch of the silver. I think I'm going to end it out with the white. Again, this is a four by four. Actually, is that four? Might be a five by five, you know. So it didn't, need a, it didn't need all this paint. I'm gonna to have too much, I guarantee you. But we're just gonna lift it up, put it upside down in the middle, flip it. Again, it's called a flip cup. When you do a flip cup, if I pull this out, the paint on the edges of the cup are gonna fall and they're gonna fall and make a ring. Sometimes that's really cool. I am actually gonna let it do. Sometimes people kind of pull it over here and drag it this way so that they don't get that effect. I kind of want the drips, so I'm going to let it happen. So we're just going to pull this up. See how it kind of drips everywhere. You can see already I have way too much paint. Look at all those little cells that... Again, those are... Those aren't necessarily cells, those are just bubbles that are popping, but because they're, they're a bubble in the top layer of paint, it lets the bottom layer kind of show up. I really love what happened to some of this white. Again, a completely different pour with the exact same colors, which is why I love this art form. All right, so the last quick tip as we do some close-ups of all of these pours. I know it was hard to see the, the detail on this one. And it won't even focus on it. There we go. It's really hard to see with the camera, but you can see all that detail underneath. The last thing we want to do with these is, once you're finished, I like to take one of the popsicle sticks that I have, and all we want to do is see how on the edges it's starting to drip. We just want to take the popsicle stick and run it over to get those drips off. And again, we just want to... You don't want to leave those drips because what happens is those drips are pulling, as they drip, it's pulling paint off the side down. And the paint that's on the side is pulling paint off the top. So everything on your pour will kind of expand out and you don't really want that. So for the 15 minutes or so after I pour, I like to just go with the popsicle stick, nice and easy. And just get all that extra paint off. And I'll do that two or three times after I'm done pouring. And that keeps the sides from getting too thin and then showing the canvas through. And also it keeps the painting from kind of pulling itself off on the edges. Now that you've learned how to do an acrylic pour, you've probably seen a swipe technique and here, is how I recommend doing a swipe.